like I say, sir, everything is true, and like I said, because you believe it. So see, this is what I try to explain to people, what, what status and standing and competency means in court. It's, did you have a real, real malicious intent to be fraud? No. No, I didn't. What, what I'm trying to say, not just you, not just you personally, sir, I'm just saying everybody who's listening to this call, it's not just you in particular. The, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to say to people, explain to everybody. Status, standing, and competency has, has to do with malicious or willful intent and knowing that you knew what you were doing was right or wrong. Now, you believed that you were doing right. You did not believe that you were doing anything wrong. You were led to believe that this is 100% bona fide way of settling, set off, or discharging, or dismissing a debt. You were led to believe that whatever society, whatever group, whatever guru came down your path, whatever Snake Charles uh, salesman that you came through, that this elixir, this tonic, was going to cure all your ills. Okay? So this is what this is what's wonderful. Because all you have to do is say, please forgive me of, of, of my miscalculation or my judgment, but at this time, the best I could do to set off, settle, or discharge, dismiss this debt is $5 a week for the next 10,000 years. And a credit card company, I'm telling you, like with the IRS, it's a corporation. It doesn't live. It doesn't breathe. It's not going to stop them. Their children are still going to go to sleep at night. Whether or not you pay them $5 a week, or $5,000 a week, or $5 million a week, as long as their computer, a ledger sheet, as long as their spreadsheet hits zero at sundown, they're a happy company. They really couldn't care less how long it takes you to discharge it, dismiss it, or settle the debt. Because the more debt on a book that they have, the banks make money where there's debt. When they can prove, look at all these debtors we have, look at all this interest, look at all these penalties, look at all these fees, look at all these fines, look at all these payments we're going to have in the future. Because all these people, we lent them $10. By the time they're done paying this thing off, they're going to give us $10,000 for this $10 credit card bill. That's how they get people to invest in their credit card companies and build more wealth for themselves. Not so much the payments coming from you, but outside speculators who say, oh, wow, look at how much money this credit card company is going to have coming in in the future. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Right, so the thing is issuing credits and playing with credits and numbers on a spreadsheet, and they're getting you and me to put in our earnings from our labor, and they're getting the investors to put in their money from their labor. So what, what people are failing to see sometimes is that this is like a low-pressure zone that is sucking in everything from both sides. The wealthy are throwing their money into it as investors and getting sucked into the Ponzi scheme. And we, as the people on the other end, are throwing our money in um, to, to create the opportunity for them to create the other opportunity for the other people. So there's people in the middle that are just siphoning everything. And that's, and that's how the game is played. Yep. So like I said, I'll explain to you in, in great detail. There's no problem. You know how, how, how this, this how this game is being played on here. It's just a great con. It, it's a wonderful game that they're playing. And all this 1933 stuff, it's lovely. It's beautiful. It's magical. And then when Jimmy Carter did, he pulled old silver, old birth certificates and converted those all into some sort of a uh, you know collateral or, or some sort of bills of exchange or some sort of derivatives, and he put it into the IMF. That's lo lovely. That has to do with the U.S. citizens. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you and me as a man. When we intercourse and we change and we commerce with each other, it has nothing to do with birth certificates. It has what, what these nations do, what these countries do, what these corporations, what the United States Corporation does, what Mexico Corporation does, whatever they do in their own little internal policies and their own little games and schemes to keep their little uh, world floating on a two-dimensional world, that's the two-dimensional world. It has nothing to do with the three-dimensional man. Now, can you get sucked into the two-dimensional world? Oh, you better believe it. You just did. You applied for a credit card. <laughs> you applied for a credit card. Now you're binding yourself to their terms, fees, and rules and conditions. Now, if you never had a credit card, would you be talking to me right now? No. Nope. There you go. So, so now, you, now I'm just trying to explain to you how to get away from the two-dimensional world. And the two-dimensional world has no problem letting you go. 
as long as their ledger sleep and their spreadsheet and their computer program says zero, at the end of the day, they couldn't care less how long it takes because the computer doesn't know the difference between 99 years or 9 minutes. It doesn't care. It doesn't care. Now, as long as it knows the machine is going to be fed, it doesn't care how long. You're just one person out of a billion. They thought the machine could not care less. Now, if you owed me money, oh, I'd be upset. I'd be like, how am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to keep the roof on my head? How am I going to keep these lights on? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? I work off a different system. I need actual tangible something holding my hand. When you deal with a credit card company, it's intangible. It's zeros and ones, it's just spreadsheets, it's just numbers, it's just electricity, it's just digits, it's, it's intangible. It's, it doesn't exist in the, in, in the three-dimensional world. You see what I'm saying? Does that kind of make a little bit of sense? Yeah. Alrighty. 